Hello, welcome to Prajin Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 57. In this session, we'll understand what is this two-string method, where did that come from, and the reasons to override that. Now, within .NET Framework, we know that every type, directly or indirectly, inherits from System.Object class. And if you look at System.Object class, it has four methods which are actually available to every type within .NET. For example, let's say I have a variable of type integer. And now look at this. When I say number dot, you see these methods dot two string get type get hash code and the equals. These four methods are actually defined in the base system dot object class, and through inheritance, they are available to every type within dot net. All right. Now in this session, we will see the reasons to override the two string method. Now look at this. If I want to print this number, now what am I doing here? I'm actually converting this integer into its string representation. And if I try to print the string representation of an integer, look at what's going to happen. It will actually convert that properly. I mean, as we expect. So here it's an an integer format but here we are converting that to string the base implementation of the two string properly formats this integer in its string string representation but however when we have custom types you know for example let's say i have a class called customer so i have a class called customer which has got maybe a first name and a last name So first name property which is auto implemented similarly let's have a last name property which is also auto implemented all right so very simple class which has got two properties now if we create an instance of this custom type customer c1 is equal to new customer and obviously we can initialize it with first and last name let's say first name is simon and maybe the last name, maybe 10, Simon 10. All right, so we have our custom class object now. Now, if I say c1.toString, okay, let's look at what's going to happen. Okay, now you might guess what might actually happen. Look at this. If it's an integer, there's no doubt, you know, okay, this is an integer format. It, it gives us the string representation when we actually print that. But this is a complex type. The customer class is a complex type. Now, here we made the class very simple, which has got just two properties. But in reality, it might have more properties, you know, integer, uh, you know, customer ID, date of birth, etc. Now, when we say, okay, c string what should it do which which property should it print it will know it will not have any idea whatsoever so obviously something you know strange might happen when we actually run this look at this when i say okay convert this customer object to its string representation what's happening it is actually printing the namespace dot the type name what is the type of the c1 customer and this customer class is present within prajim namespace so it's actually printing uh, the namespace dot customer i mean which is nothing but the type name so the default implementation of the two string that's provided by the base system dot object class will actually give you the complete name of the type including the namespace you know with it that's what we get with the default implementation but let's say you know the requirement you know for your project is in such a way that when somebody calls two string on an object they want something you know for example maybe within here what i want is i want maybe the customer's last name comma and then space and then his first name okay is it possible to do that absolutely what you got to do here is to override the two string method okay let's see how to do that okay to override that, it's pretty simple. We have already understood that every type within .NET Framework, you know, directly or indirectly inherits from System.Object, and System.Object actually provides four methods, and out of those four, you can actually override three of them: equals, get hash code, and two string. Okay. In this session, we'll learn how to override the two string method. Look at this. The moment I type override and process and press space, it sh the IntelliSense shows up the methods that are available within this class to override okay so to string so the moment I select that I get the syntax of the overriding 
All right. Now here, what you can do is you don't have to use the base implementation. If you want it, you can do it. We know that the base implementation, if we just run it like this, look at this. It just the base implementation is nothing but it prints the complete class name, including the namespace. Okay. Now I don't want the base implementation. Instead of that, I want the last name, comma space, and then the first name. So this class last name plus concatenate comma with space and then the first name all right so now if we run this you should say last name comma space first name so you can customize this however you want depending on the requirement of your project okay generally it makes sense to override the two string method you know to give you the meaningful representation you know string representation of a complex type Actually, you can either say c one dot two string, or you know, to convert an object into into, into its string representation, you can also say you can also use the convert class dot two string, and then pass it your custom type. So now, if we run that, you know, we get the same output except that we are using convert class here instead of the dot two string on that object. Okay. Remember that you can override the two string method to give your complex types string representation a meaning rather than using the default, you know, base classes implementation, which will give you the type full name, you know, namespace dot the type name. All right. That's it in this session. On this slide, you can find some resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.